This problem gives us two blocks connected by a string, and we're told that when they're set in motion, block B descends, and block A moves to the right at a constant speed. Part A asks us for the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the table. Let's start by drawing two free body diagrams. First, one for block A, and then one for this system. There are four forces acting on block A. Its weight is down, the normal force is straight up, perpendicular to the table, tension pulls it to the right, and kinetic friction opposes the motion so it's directed left. Now for the system free body diagram. Let me identify everything inside this light blue area as the system. I want to choose a coordinate system now that's aligned with the direction of this system's motion. So I'll call the direction of motion the positive s direction. It's the direction the string is moving in. Notice that there are two external forces with components in that direction. The weight of B pulls the system in the direction of the motion, and kinetic friction opposes that motion. In the perpendicular direction, there's the weight of A and the normal force. So when we draw the free body diagram, with the string's motion in this direction, we have the weight of B in the positive direction of motion, the kinetic friction force opposing it, and then the weight of A and the normal force perpendicular to that. The reason for drawing this rather unusual free body diagram is that it eliminates tension, an unknown, and that keeps us from having to solve two equations for two unknowns later. Now let's come back to the free body diagram for block A and apply Newton's second law in the vertical direction. There's no vertical acceleration because block A moves horizontally. Summing the vertical forces from the free body diagram and rearranging shows us that the normal force equals the weight of A. Now let's apply Newton's second law to the system, summing forces in the direction of the string, or of the motion, setting it equal to mass times acceleration in that direction. The blocks move at constant speed in the same direction, so there's no acceleration. Summing the forces in the direction of the motion gives us the weight minus the friction force equaling zero. The kinetic friction force equals mu sub k times n. So now we can solve for the coefficient of kinetic friction, mu sub k finding that it equals the ratio of the weight of B to the normal force N. The normal force equals the weight of A, so substituting the numbers gives us mu sub K, the coefficient of kinetic friction, equals 0 0.556. Part B asks us to find the system's acceleration if a cat is placed on top of block A and the system is set in motion again. We're told that the cat's weight equals the weight of block A. Let me move our result for the coefficient of kinetic friction up here so that we can redo this part and solve it for part B. Instead of a free body diagram of block A, I want to draw the free body diagram of the system of A plus C, block A plus the cat. And that means I need an additional weight in the downward direction. And applying Newton's second law, we see that there's still no acceleration in the y direction, so all the changes here is that the normal force on block A now equals the sum of the two weights, block A plus the cat, and that's just twice block A's weight. Making the same change to the whole system's free body diagram, we'll find that the sum of the forces now changes because the kinetic friction force has changed, and we need to rewrite this part. A sub S is no longer zero. That's what we're asked to find. So adding forces in the direction of the string equaling mass times acceleration gives us on the left hand side the same as before the weight of block B minus the kinetic friction force equaling the mass of the whole system block A plus B plus the cat times the acceleration we're looking for. Substitute friction force equals mu sub K times N with the masses equal to their weights divided by G and the normal force twice the weight of A and solve this for the acceleration A. And you get this expression. We know all of those values, so we can substitute them and calculate. When you do this, you find that the system's acceleration after the cat's laid on it is minus 2.13 meters per second squared. That negative sign tells you the acceleration is in the direction opposite the motion, so it's slowing down as time goes by.